Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Routing. In this module, we will learn about routing, including setup, manual routing, and active routing. Starting with our WC Topping Projects PCB, you will note that placement was completed using a combination of hand placement with grids and alignment, as well as positioning based on coordinates using jump to location for the precise positioning. In addition, there are a few tracks added, which we will use later in this module. To review, we had created classes in this schematic with the intent to provide the heads up to the PCB layout engineer for some power nets, and we added clearance rules for the Anderson connectors to allow them to abut. The power net class provides the PCB engineer a simple way to create the width rules for higher current nets. The schematic designer did not specify the width, but left it up to the PCB designer to determine the proper width based on copper weight specification for fabrication. This is one example of communicating the designer's intent through creating a power net class while allowing the PCB physical constraints to be determined by the board layout engineer. Looking at the PCB, we see the rule that uses the power net class for driving widths. One important addition to the rules was for the board outline clearance. This provides the board fabrication house clearance for the separating of the individual PCBs from the manufacturing panel. Looking at the CAN interface schematics, you'll notice that we added the CAN net class in the schematics, but also added the desired width constraint at the same time. This was added to avoid the potential of deleting this net class when updating from the schematic. While net classes can in fact be created in the PCB, which we have done, having them in the schematics is a recommended best practice. While we're adding the net class directives, we included in this case the width constraint as well. In combination with the PCB rules, the PCB preferences help drive both trace widths and via sizes. Opening up the preferences and looking at the PCB editor folder, let's navigate and open the defaults subsection. Here we can see the Altium Designer default preferences for a number of PCB objects. I would like to set the default width to 10 mil if it's not already. Here we see that it is. But if we needed, we could have edited the width value directly by clicking on it and entering the new default value. Now let's look at the default via size. I like using a 30 mil diameter with a 16 mil hole as my default. Basically, it lines up nicely with the number of fab houses that I use that are economical prototyping shops. You can edit these to suit your company specifications or needs. The solder mask expansion can be either manually set or I would recommend using rules. This allows for changes based on rules as well. Likewise, the other primitive defaults could be edited, and I would encourage you to investigate them in order to become more familiar with the options and to update them as needed. Closing the preferences window and turning our attention to the PCB, let's open up the rules and clicking on the routing rule via. It was edited from the typical default values to allow for a wider range of via sizes. Setting the min hole size to 12 mil and preferred to 16 mil, with the minimum diameter of 25, with 30 for preferred. Also note the max hole size of 110 mil and the max pad size of 250 mil. Now we can use the full range of these vias on the PCB. Closing the rules, we can now get to the fun part, routing. It's very important to have the rules in place for routing before routing to avoid rework later. There are a number of routing methods from fully manual to automatic. Looking at the route pull-down menu, we see a couple of options. Active route, interactive routing, interactive differential pair routing, interactive multi-routing, as well as others. Noteworthy is the gloss selected option, which we will show its effect on routed nets later. There are also a number of unrouting options, as you can see here. Let's start with the basic manual interactive routing option. Looking at the layer tabs at the bottom edge of the PCB view, we see the top layer tab highlighted. This indicates the current active layer. Clicking on the bottom layer tab causes the manual routing to start on the bottom layer if we were to start now. Changing active layer selection on the PCB can be done either with a mouse click on the tab or by hitting the minus key or plus key. Clicking on the plus key moves the active layer selection to the right, back to the bottom layer. Clicking the minus key makes the top layer active again for routing. Using either the route pull-down menu, or as I prefer, clicking on the interactively route connections icon, we can now start to do a route. Moving over the PCB, the mouse changes to a crosshair, and the status on the bottom left of the Altium Designer tool shows the current interactive routing connection status. 
Now in this mode, we left click on the pad we want to start routing and then move towards the endpoint indicated by the connection fly line. Left clicking again ends it. Right clicking at this point escapes from the route mode. One feature that is useful in Altium Designer in the midst of routing is the ability to zoom in and out with the mouse wheel using the control key. Likewise, the shift key and mouse wheel scrolls left and right. These allow us to get better perspective while we are in the midst of an active route. Now we can place the wire segment endpoints by clicking at the desired locations using the left mouse button. Again, when the route is completed, right click once to finish the route and to exit the routing mode, right click again. What if during your routing, you want to back up on some of the place track vertices? Hitting the backspace key will remove the last place endpoint. Continuing to hit the backspace will sequentially remove the remaining endpoints back to the starting point. This is helpful if you need to revisit the track routing after having placed some of the segments but have not finished the routing. Given this is a power net and the typical width is 30 mil, when we come to U1's pad, we will need to reduce the width of the route. Hitting the tab button, we can now edit the width in the properties window using the slider. This is a quick way to adjust the trace widths that are also based on the rule min and max values. While we have the interactive route in progress, tapping the spacebar will change the bend of the current track segment like this. Hitting the tab key pauses the routing and gives us the opportunity to edit the track using the properties panel. We can change routing styles from 45 degree, 45 degree with arc, 90 degree, 90 degree with arc, and any angle. Selecting any angle and resuming routing, we can place a trace at any angle, like you can see. Hitting tab again, we can select the 90 degree with arc. The next option we will show is the 90 degree. If we had the 4590 restriction box checked, then the track styles would be limited to those topologies. With that checkbox cleared, it allows us to toggle through the full list of track routing topology styles. At this point, it would be useful to fix some of the quick routes we have placed. Left click on the track to select it, and once selected, left click and hold while dragging the mouse to move the track, centering it on the pads. Oftentimes, you need to change routing layers in mid route. We would need a via inserted. This can be done either manually using the pull down menu, but there is a faster method. To switch from the current signal layer to the next, while routing, hit the plus key to move down or write in the right words in the tabs. Hitting the minus key moves us up. Here we are starting on the bottom layer and hitting the minus key moves us back to the top layer. Now we are routing on the top layer and have a via inserted. With a mini signal layer PCB, we can change the layers during routing using the same plus and minus key. It will drive to the next signal layer, moving to the left or moving to the right, depending on whether you've been doing the plus or minus key. Here's another track that traverses between the top and the bottom layer using the plus and minus keys while routing. One thing that trips up new users arises from the concept of net naming for the tracks. This occurs when starting a route in mid PCB without starting on a pin, a track, or a via. The track being laid down does not have a net name associated with it. The track property window would show a net name of no net. Not a big deal and this should try to connect it to any net named object like a pin. This cannot be connected to, as it would cause a short. You can either select all the trace segments and then assign the name to them, or, which again is faster, start with an object that already has the net name associated. To assign a net name to this no name trace, select the trace, and as you can see, it has no net assignment. Then hit the tab key to select all the traces on this layer. If there were multiple layers, you would hit tab again and that would select all of the layers. Now in the properties window, pick the correct net name. In this case, we're looking for spy underscore s clock by starting to type it in and then selecting it from the pull down menu. Now we can connect the track to the pad as it has the same net name. Now that we have some nets routed, we can take advantage of the automatic loop removal feature for cleaning up routes. Taking a quick peek at the PCB Preferences Interactive Routing section, we check to see that the Automatically Remove Loops checkbox is checked. This is the most useful tool feature for cleaning up traces. Going back to the PCB, let's try this out. Click on the Interactive Routing and then left click on a segment that we want to remove. Now drawing a new track, and when finished, right clicking ends the new route. 
Now we see the effect of the auto loop removal setting. The now redundant tracks were removed. One thing that is handy to clean up routes is to use the gloss feature. First you select the track and using tab to select the entire track. Now we would click on the route pull down menu and pick gloss selected. This will clean up the routing of the nets. In some cases manual adjustment can further fine tune the route allowing for future routing room. Loop removal is a very convenient feature, but I will disable it for adding parallel tracks to things like the 12 volt power rail or for a multi layer PCB antenna. Here I start routing on the bottom layer, knowing that there is a top layer connection already. Hitting Tab, I can now edit the route properties and disable loop removal. Note, this is a toggle feature so that until it is set again, loop removal will be disabled. So here is the bottom track. And now here's the top track still intact. Once you have finished the parallel tracks, don't forget to switch back to enabling the automatic loop removal. It will not retroactively remove loops. Only if you modify the net with parallel tracks will it perform the automatic loop removal. So be aware. Here we have quickly routed the net that needs to be cleaned. Rather than manually moving all the small segments, we should just use loop removal. Starting routing again, we hit tab and then check to re-enable the loop removal. The gloss selected option located under the routing pull down menu is very useful for cleaning up quickly routed traces like this group of nets. In this case, I used ESL or edit select line and then I hit tab to grab all of them. Now we click on the gloss selected and the tool will gloss or clean up the selected nets. There are two more routing modes that we will address in this module interactive multi route and active route. Interactive multi-route can be used for routing a group of signals like a data bus from one component to another. Selecting the pads to route first, let's use the Properties Panel Selection Filter to limit selecting only pads. Now click on each of the pads we wish to multi-route, and then clicking on the Interactive Multi-Route icon, we can start the route of all the tracks in parallel like so. Adding segment endpoints as necessary along the way can help guide the placement of the group until the termination point is clicked on or when you're near the termination, hold the control key down and then left click. The tool will auto-complete the routing if possible. Select all of the nets and then hit tab for all the tracks and then use gloss to clean up the routes. Active route is a newer and more efficient way to route groups of signals with the intelligence of the PCB layout engineer guiding the routing. Start by selecting a group of fly line connects. To do so, hold the Alt key down and with the left mouse button, sweep right to left to select them. Then click on the route pull down menu and select active route. The selected pins will be routed on the current layer and others if necessary. If needed, open up the PCB active route panel from the PCB tab and select the desired layers for routing and whether or not to gloss the results. In this module, we covered the routing, and routing preferences for the PCB while demonstrating the various routing options available. Please do the PCB routing exercise.